Uh, my name is Joshua Dysart. I uh, am from Texas. I live in Venice Beach, California now, and this is my 13th Comic-Con in a row. My name is Matthew Sturgis. I'm from Austin, Texas, and this is my fifth Comic-Con. I've been coming to Comic-Con since I think it was 92. And, uh, and I think it was at one of the Comic Cons when I started having a crush on Jimmy Palmiotti. Which is me, thank you. Right. <laughs> and, and your name, you gotta tell me your name. Oh yeah, and this is Amanda Connor. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, I mean the obvious change of course is like massive expansion. A ridiculous expansion to taking over the whole convention center. I've seen the convention center itself expand to, to take care of us. Uh, when at my very first con here, I felt like Jonah swallowed by the whale. Little did I know, it was nothing. It was like, at that point, it was just one football field long. Um, and they used to, I hope I'm getting this right, but I think it was Friday afternoon or Saturday, they used to move these huge partitions because so that we could take up, a, so the, I think it was so the retailers or something, we'd take up a little bit more of the con floor. And it felt so epic, you know? And now you walk out and, and it's uh, terrifying. <laughs> it's terrifying how big it is. Since I've been coming in 91, it's tripled in size. Um, it's also become a little less about comics and more about multimedia. Um, and it's definitely, I got to say, at least 40% more women at the show than when I first started. When I, when I, in 91, I remember there was seven women at Comic Con and we were all <laughs> after them. They, they were either the luckily, luckiest or the most, you know, the worst thing that could ever happen. But it's actually, you know, it's actually taken leaps and bounds as far as evening out the sexes, I think, and uh, I think it's just a matter of what the, what, what's going on at the con. It's something for everybody now. I do have favorite memories that I will not tell you because they're out of control. Um, I have to think about clean memories, and that's a little bit harder, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I remember the first time, I don't know if this is a favorite memory, but I remember the first time somebody walked up with uh, one of my characters tattooed on them, you know, and I tried to talk them out of doing that in the future. I'm like, are you kidding me? You're gonna get old, it's gonna get slouchy. Uh, that was crazy, crazy. Um, uh, and actually, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, announcing Greendale, announcing to the world that I and Neil Young were working together, and I did that here, you know, at this con. That's a huge thing for me, um, and this con was the vessel for that. In fact, all the biggest creative moments of my life when I got to finally share them with the world. They all happened here at this con. So those are really the most precious, safe memories that I can tell you on camera. For me as a fan, you know, meeting my comic book heroes from, from growing up, you know, um, meeting Marv Wolfman was a huge thing for me. And, and uh, meeting Grant Morrison was kind of terrifying to me, but also exhilarating. And so that's something. And, but also, you know, just yesterday, I met a girl who had dressed up in a costume of a character that I created for my book, House of Mystery. And that was really cool, because it made me feel like this is something that I did mattered to someone, and it mattered to them enough to where they went way out of their way to do something to respect it. And that was huge. Obviously, because of the sheer volume of people that come through this convention, I get to meet more readers than I do at any other convention here. And. Uh, <laughs> It's invaluable to me to, to meet them and to get their support and to do a song and dance for them so that they will love me because it's all to get love. No, uh, uh, it's great. It's 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 phenomenal. You know, we walked into the Vertigo uh, panel yesterday, and we had two halls dedicated to us, completely packed with people, and it just feels wonderful to get up there and express yourself and tell them about what you're doing and have them believe in it and have them come back to the booth. And, and uh, it's just great, it's just great. I mean, it's, it's one of the, I don't know of any other industry actually where the creative talent ha is so available to the consumer of the material. Uh, and that feels great, because I'm an egalitarian by nature. And there's something profoundly egalitarian about my art form, comics, and, and it's this institution that allows that egalitarianism, that, like, that coming together, so I dig it. When you do a thing like when you're a writer or an artist, you spend so much time alone in a room by yourself doing what you do. For me, it's just typing all day long. So to have the opportunity to get out and actually meet the people that read the books and have things to say about them is really, really important because it's a different feel than what you get on the internet. 
You know, when people, when you meet people in person, it's it's warmer and more real, and that's really the, the best part of it. And I think everything, all the panels and the signings, to me, are mainly to just make that happen. Yeah, I, I work on a book called Unknown Soldier, which is um, concerned in one way or another with East African politics. And I was very excited to announce this year that issues 13 and 14 are going to be drawn by a gentleman named uh, Patrice Massioni, who is from the Democratic Republic of Congo, is from Kinshasa, and uh, uh, part of the Mbala ethnic group. And to my knowledge, this is the first time that a major publisher has been able to bring an African cartoonist to mainstream North American cinema. And uh, it feels really good to be a part of that because the book is very concerned with be Boeing, be sorry, being both entertaining, um, but also painting a, a genuine, earnest portrait of, of Africa. And by bringing in African artists, we're, to we're able to totally blow open the doors for these guys, ma make them feel like they have equity in the world art scene, you know, and so that was really, really special for me. As soon as things happen, it shows up on Twitter feeds, you know, if I have a little search for something that I do, or that, as soon as it happens, you know, within five minutes, or even while it's happening, people are, you know, blogging it from inside the panel, you know, so people uh, everywhere else know about it as soon as it happens. Um, I think that while I love superhero books, the dominance of the superhero perception of us is frustrating sometimes. Um, but all that's changing, and, and it feels really good. Uh, and it feels really good um, because the fact of the matter is, is we are a medium equally, maybe even more so valid than any other narrative medium. And there's no reason why we can't tackle absolutely anything. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is in a world with uh, a world filled with streaming audio and every flat surface flashing images at you, we are still one of the only mediums without motion or sound. We're quiet, we give so much more, to the reader has so much more input in, in, in that, and I think it's an amazing way to tell a story, and it's about time that the rest of the world started to see that. And it's going to be a very big step for us when they actually start coming back to the comic. Instead of going to see the movie and seeing that as a validation, when we're no longer just source material for film, when they start to see that, no, this is where the real imagination pool is. This is where we make um, courageous creative decisions. We don't, we don't mince about. We don't like quietly uh, stress out about, you know, we make bold creative decisions in this industry that major films can't do, that major video games can't do. And I think people are seeing that. And that's why Hollywood's cannibalizing us right now, because we have all the imagination and they don't, you know? And pretty soon people are gonna lose that that second tier and they're just gonna see us as a medium, which I'm looking forward to. As much as I love film, I'm looking forward to being independent and you know, not just source material. Yeah. And I and this again, this convention is a huge part of that that manifesting in the consciousness of the larger populace.